Hello, everyone. This is Marley Hutchinson. Thank you for taking the time to view my organizational analysis. Um, today, we are going to be diving into the persuasive messages of the Lemon Tree, which is a beauty shop and hair salon um, in Buffalo, West Virginia which is about 20 minutes away from campus, if you're unaware. So first, I just wanted to showcase a couple photos that didn't make it into the analysis. Um, this is just the business card, which has the business address and phone number, which of course you'll find in the handout, um, as well as the owner. This here is uh, just a display in the shop of some hair magazines that customers can look through. And of course, I had to include the business owner herself, who happens to be my wonderful grandmother. So I do have a lot of experience or existing knowledge um, about the shop. Um, I've been going there for as long as I've been alive. She's always cut my hair. So I was very excited and very um, ready to get started with this project and spend that time with her. So without further ado, let's get into the persuasive messages. So the first message we have is a Google review. Um, if you go to the Google reviews page for the lemon tree, you'll find a five star rating um, and two different reviews. But I, what I really want to focus on is the one that um, details with the, the uh, includes an actual comment. So she says, love Eve and the great work she does and love the owner, Linda, for not being greedy or overpriced like most salons. And plus, she does fantastic work as well. All around a great place to get quality, consistent services. Great job, ladies. So what I noticed about this message was it had um, central and peripheral processing cues. Central cues obviously being uh, the details in the comment, the talking about, you know, great work, the owner's not greedy or overpriced like most salons, that sort of thing. Um, it satisfies the customer's need for quality and consistent services and a fair price. Um, and it also comes from a credible source. Um, the writer Jess is deemed a local guide. So she has 46 other reviews, which basically just means that she's a credible source. She's, uh, it's not the first time that she's left a review and um, her comments are trustworthy. So moving on, the next message is this Facebook post. It is from the Lemon Trees Facebook page. It features photos of before and after a service treatment and it kind of details the service and um, what the lady came in with, what she left with. So I what the message elements that I noted about this were um, it has a wide audience reach. Um, obviously, Facebook is a huge social platform, so um, it's able to be shared with followers and mutual friends and that sort of thing. It's also a good evidence-based message. It includes the photos, which um, are also good peripheral processing cues, but they're good to build credibility on the service itself because they show proof that the client came in one way, left another, and that they were happy with their service. And then it just details the service, like I said, which is also um, kind of tied into central processing cues, but it's more coined towards the service itself. The next message that I wanted to evaluate was the gift certificates. Um, this is a program that the shop provides to returning customers, loyal customers, um, or just anyone that the owner feels to give them out to. There's no program that you participate in. There's no drawing. It's just based on 
goodwill and um the owner is very generous like that comment mentioned so the, she does give these out often uh, the message elements that I noticed here were obviously it satisfies some major consumer values of reward for loyalty, like consumer loyalty, returning to one business and um, being rewarded for that. It also strengthens the customer relationship because it provides them um, an incentive to come back and um, that, like I said, that goodwill, it just kind of helps build the relationship and establishes it on solid ground. Um, it has both cent has central processing cues, which I would say would be the monetary value, and then the peripheral processing cues, which really happens um, through narrative transportation, because to get these, you have to be involved in a situation where you're going to the shop, and then you get the gift certificate and then you have to return to the shop and provide it. So you're involved in this um, sort of process with the business now. And then the next message here is a customer of the lemon tree. She's posted on Facebook and tags the owner. Um, basically just stating that um, COVID right now is crazy. Nobody feels safe, but they really appreciate the shop and the hard work that they do. And that's sort of a constant that's stuck around with the times changing constantly. So the elements I noticed here were, obviously it has a wide audience reach again. It's on Facebook, social media platform, um, and especially uh, since it's a customer as opposed to the business itself, that customer is probably likely to have more friends, immediate friends on that platform um, than followers the business does. It also addresses the consumer need and appreciation for consistency and um, consistency in the service. Um, and then also the way the message is framed, it's it's very relatable and it it resonates, it would resonate with a person. And then the final message that I evaluated here was um, the Scruples branding that's all throughout the shop. So there's, I have two examples here. There's the photos um, above the hair drying machines, and then there is the product display on the shelf by the checkout counter, which has several different products, dry shampoos, shampoo, conditioner, hair oils, all sorts of things. So the things I noticed about this message, um, it's clearly evidence-based. Um, the shop uses exclusively scruple supplies. So you, you have, after you receive the service and you can make that decision, you know, whether or not you like it and you um, would like to buy more of those products. So for that reason, I think it's evidence-based. Um, again, it establishes credibility. The shop itself is using those products. So they are sort of, putting it on a platform and saying, look, this is okay. We use this. We use it on you. You should feel safe to use it at home. Um, peripheral processing cues, obviously the photos everywhere. They catch your eye. They're meant to communicate the brand to you in a way that's not overly um, aggressive and trying to get you to buy the product. And then narrative transportation, again, you have to be in the store, involved in some in the service in some way, um, whether you're getting your hair cut or you're just visiting and observing. Um, you're still going to be immersed in that environment where there are several advertisements for this product. So now I want to talk about some advantages and disadvantages of the messages in general. 
So the message strengths that I found, I, th I think, especially with beauty salons, they're easily evidence-based um, because you can include photos of the before and after service or you have to experience that service yourself. Um, but it's a good way to form the message um, based on evidence. I also think they have nice peripheral cues, again, including photos of the before and afters. Very easy, simple thing to do and a very common practice in haircuts and hair service. Um, credibility and trustworthiness. The, the business has been open over 25 years. Um, anyone who's ever frequented the shop that you... Well, I won't say that, but I won't speak for everybody, but shops in over over 25 years, um, obviously they're doing something right. Service and customer oriented. Um, the messages, whether they're from customers or the business itself or just reviewers, they all establish that the business meets major customer desires. They satisfy their needs, they satisfy their wants, and that they're extremely customer oriented. And I also think they have strong language, especially from the customers themselves, which speaks true to the business's service quality. And some of the disadvantages, um, the major disadvantages, the lack of frequency and quantity. There are not a lot of messages out there in general and they don't occur nearly as often as they should um some of those posts which um if you go back and look at the dates are from 20 or oh let's see or from up to two years ago and it's not that i didn't search for more recent promotions it's just that they weren't there um, so that's a major thing would be increasing the frequency and quantity of the messages in general. Another thing, they're mostly one sided. They don't really touch on why you should pick this service over another service, which can be a good thing in some in, in some instances. But I think that they should try integrating. Um, I think that they could integrate more. Uh, two-sided messages into their promotional techniques and then um, so some of the message did have both central and per peripheral processing cues not all of them did and personally I believe that in order for a message to be as um, persuasive um, or and efficient as possible it needs to have both central and peripheral processing cues so just making sure that those messages have both and then um, a lack of incentive promotion um, they don't really promote things what i mean is they don't really promote things going on within the business um or like how do i say this they don't promote things that are of or like deal. okay so they don't promote deals going on with the business or um, programs that they're having or you know short time offers that sort of thing um they just kind of show the you know the before and after of customer results or just customers um saying that they like the business so i think promoting the programs such as the gift certificates or um, discount pricing weekly specials seasonal specials that sort of thing that would definitely increase profitability so now let's talk about my proposed courses of action um, the 
First thing I would recommend is that the messages, again, are more frequent and have a higher quantity. They need to come out more often. I would say maybe even three times a week. I mean, some businesses do more. This business, I know she um, doesn't have a lot of extra time to dedicate to that, but I think three, three to four promotional messages are just like checking in. Hey, we're still here. We're the lemon tree. Hi. Um, that would be something that's not very time consuming and would definitely help to increase brand awareness. The second thing that I would recommend is to utilize more centrally processed information. Like I said, um, there's a lot of peripheral cues. They're very easily evidence-based because it's so easy to take a photo of your hair before, take a photo of your hair after the service or your nails or, um, facial hair, I guess, uh, and say, you know, look at, look at this, this, it was a success, but it's all, but not every consumer is looking for that. A lot of people want details. They want, um, specific like style information, product information, service information, all those sorts of things. So utilizing more of that, I think, would be um, a good step for the business to take in order to increase their awareness and increase customers. And then the third and final thing um, that I would recommend to them is that they influence their customers to promote the service quality received. So a lot of, or a couple of the messages that I evaluated were from customers themselves. The business doesn't pay those people to say anything. It never pays their customers to um, promote the business in any way. Um, but they also don't really request that the customers do. And I don't think it, it would be such a bad thing for them to uh, just say, Hey, you know, if you don't mind, uh, if you, if you're happy with your service, you know, post this on your Facebook and tag us and we'll maybe post you on ours. Um, something like that would be a good way to get people, um, involved in the business. It would help to build relationships because there's that personal interaction after the service, but then it would also um, help to just increase the audience reach of the message and uh, customers, which is always a great thing, of course. So in sum, um, I really did enjoy this project. I, I, I really um, appreciate the chance to use school to spend a little bit of time with my mammal. Um, but what I really learned from analyzing um, her business was this like newfound appreciation for her as a businesswoman because she really gets it so much done in a day. It blows my mind. So um I am extremely grateful for her to that. And in terms of the persuasive messages, um, I what I found is after taking this course, I look at advertisements, media, messages, anything. I look at everything and I analyze it as if it were this project. So I'll take a message and say, um, does it have central or peripheral processing cues or both? How's the language? Is it like, does it resonate with me? Is it strong? Um, is it evidence-based or is it just kind of fluffing? Did I come upon this or was it brought to me? Um, just several different ways of looking at these messages. I think that by doing that, I'm able to sort of better delegate what, well, in my opinion, better delegate what brands I think or what 
business or service I think deserves my participation, my money, my support. So, um, yeah, I really, I really have enjoyed uh, this project. It's given me a lot of insight on how businesses create pro promotional messages um, and the sort of background that goes into all of that. And it's a lot deeper than I would have ever imagined, but it's very interesting, very interesting. So thank you so much for taking the time again to listen to my presentation and um, I hope you liked it and have a nice day.